So Kamala Harris has been doing the morning shows and she was explaining how tough these sanctions are on Russia. Here she is. Is that something that the administration would continue, or would consider in terms of further sanctions, cutting yeah. off the oil and gas uh, okay, part stop of the economy? For just a sec, just, just a second. Is that something that the administration would, con- would consider uh, adding uh, in the future, cutting off the Russian oil supply? Is that something they would consider? See, I would think that that's where we would start. You know what I'm saying? I would think that's their major source of income. You know, I'm not a ballet dancer, and I probably would not look good in a leotard. However, probably. However, if they hit me first, when they when they try to shut us down, if they hit me first with no money from your ballet performances, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to cry. I'm going to weep. It's going to be terrible, terrible, terrible. Don't hit me, you know, like on the radio thing or the broadcasting thing. No, no, no. A lot of my money comes through ballet dancing. (laughs) And then if you say, I can't watch Batman. I can't. What do you mean? I'm going to have to wait. You're not going to give me an advance showing of Batman? No premieres of Batman? Are you out of your mind between that and ballet dancing? How am I going to go on? That's what Putin is thinking right now. So the question to our vice president is, um, would you guys consider cutting off his, his money supply by banning Russian oil exports? Is that something that the administration would continue, or would consider in terms of further sanctions, cutting off the oil and gas uh, part of the economy for Russia? Well, well as you know, that on this issue, for example, we applaud Germany in terms of what it has done as it relates to Nord Stream 2, okay. as it relates so to what we approve. need to do domestically as well as, as what uh-huh. we need to do in terms of this issue generally. Right. We have, as the president said, uh, reevaluated what we're doing in terms of the strategic oil reserve right. here in the United States Stop. to make sure. Anybody notice? I mean, somebody, please send up a flare. If she gets close to answering the question, just send up a flare. We'll come back. In you. terms of what? In terms of considering cutting the money off. In terms of oil? Yeah. In terms of yeah. her answer about in, in oil yeah. in terms of the right. money. Yeah. In terms of yeah. that. Okay. If you see that, just in, send in, up a flare. In terms of her answer. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. I just want to make sure in, I understand. Yeah. In terms in of. In terms of. Yeah. Her, yeah. Her response her to the okay. question. So um, then she goes right into, as the president has said, we're addressing this now with our strategic oil reserves. Now, let's just do a little math here. Okay. First of all, we're talking about hurting the Russians, not America. Okay. How do we cut their money off from oil? He's doing a bang up job of cutting all of our money off by making oil and gasoline wildly expensive. Okay. Hey, don't you wish you lived up north right now so you could pay for the oil and gas to heat your house? Oh, my gosh, you in Boston must be having a blast right now. Oh, by the way, in Boston, you're the one receiving the Russian oil. Um, All right. So we're going to release the strategic oil reserve. Let's look at those three words, shall we? Strategic oil reserve. What does that imply? Well, mm. it's a place you put oil, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. In terms of oil. Okay. Mm-hmm. You're reserving it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you're reserving it for what? Some sort of strategic purpose. Ha! Huh. Mm-hmm. What is that? Well, it's certainly not higher prices. The strategic oil reserve is something that we started because when we got into global war, we went, geez, if somebody cuts off our oil... We better have enough oil so we could make, you know, the fuel for our planes and aircraft carriers. That's what the strategic oil reserve is for. Now, you know, it's not like we're on the the edge of World War III. It's not like we have a, a global conflict. Two weeks ago, two weeks ago, 
None of us were thinking, hey, I wonder if they're going to launch missiles. None of us were thinking. None of us were going, you know, it is a possibility that we have World War III. I mean, it could happen tomorrow. None of us were thinking that I'm a guy who worries about everything. I wasn't worried about that two and a half weeks ago. Were you? So, you know, two and a half weeks ago, maybe, you know, hey, we're going to dip into the strategic oil reserves. The oil that we have reserved strategically so our war machine could have fuel. Let's dip into that. Let's, you know what? We're just going to release a whole bunch of stuff. It is, according to Goldman Sachs, not going to make a dime of difference at the gas pump. But let's just get rid of some of that oil. Man, that oil is just sitting around not doing anything. Okay, okay, this is great. You know what we should do? We should go and try to destroy anything with the word Russian in it. Like the Russian tea room. Do you hear in Washington, D.C.? The Russian, I don't know, Waffle House or whatever the hell it is in Washington, D.C. Probably, it's in D.C. Probably run by either the Russian mob or, you know, the uh, the KGB. Probably. Uh, but, you know, I don't think we need to go in and destroy it. Do you? I mean, as a private citizen, do you think that's really... I mean, he did lose his black belt. Now, if he loses the <laughs> Russian Waffle House, what is he going to do? People are also in New York City not going to the Russian Tea Room in protest. Now, let's think this one through. The Russian Tea Room. Hmm. It was started in, well, the 1920s, 1927. Started by Russian ballet people. Yeah. From the Soviet Union. Yeah. That's that's the time. Now, I, who knows what the Russian tea room really is, you know? But let me just tell you, I know it was started in the 20s. I know it was started by a bunch of Russians. And I know there were a bunch of ballerinas, okay? I know that they were performing at Carnegie Hall. And then they left. They just left their country. And they needed to make ends meet, so they started a Russian tea room. My gosh, the infiltration in this country is crazy. Now, let's, let's not think and dwell too long on the fact that maybe in 1927, those uh, members of the Imperial Ballet didn't like what was happening in the Soviet Union and defected. A Russian tea room, wait a minute, no, it's all about Russia. That tea's got something in it that makes me hate Ukrainians. Let's not eat there, I'll tell you that right now. What is wrong with us? This is the first time, this is the first time. Yeah, I think I can say this. It's the first time that I have seen such a coordinated effort on all fronts. I don't know what's true anymore. I really don't know. I have no idea. I know I've done my homework over the last two years because of the, the Trump uh, nightmare, the lies that came from the media last time about Ukraine. I know who they are. I know how they're connected to Joe Biden and his lovely son. I know that our State Department is responsible for that little Nazi group. What? How could you say that? They hate Nazis. No, they really don't. Our State Department and our, our CIA, they'll fund anyone. Anyone. Oh, that's crazy. They would never do that. They would never do that. I mean, certainly they wouldn't have done that with Osama bin Laden. We're the ones who financed all of that. And then it became a little, a little tough. Now, all of the newspapers, all of them, New York Times, Washington Post, they have done long stories on this particular Nazi group. Okay? They've been against it. They've been, wait a minute, how did they? None of them are exposing that we financed it with that, gee, that missing $7 billion. Where did I put that $7 billion? 
But now, the Washington Post and the New York Times, they're just rediscovering this Nazi group. What? Have you heard? No, that's not. That can't be true. No, Ukraine is the good guy. That's, that's, it's a small group. It's nothing to worry about, really, because I read your newspaper. I read what you said before. How do you trust anything? I, my job is to tell you the truth. I can't tell you the truth of what's going on in Ukraine because I can't read anything other than what social media has, has filtered for me. So I only see one side of it or what the cable news companies are showing me. I don't know. I don't know. I just know that uh, Stephen Miller was right, that this is the first war that is all social media. No, how dare you say that? Is it because you're white and these people are white? What about Syria? No, no, no. This one is highly organized. This one involves everyone, and it involves Zelensky, who I like. But let's not forget he's an actor. Let's not forget he knows how to use social media. Good for him. I'm glad. But uh, do we know? I mean, look how many things that we have heard. Have you heard about the ghost of, what is it, ghost of Kiev? What was that ghost? The, the, yeah, the, the, the pilot, pilot that was supposedly yeah. knocking down all these planes. Yeah. Not, not, not yeah. accurate. <sighs> it's what? Not no, don't pay attention to him. <laughs> Did you hear about those brave Ukrainian soldiers that were on that island and the Russian ship came up and said, hey, you give up your arms. And they were like, yet, screw you, Russia. Yeah, that was a great story. Oh, not true. No, well, they did say that. They just didn't die after it. <laughs> yeah. They didn't. Those brave soldiers didn't captured. go out in a in a blaze of glory. It was still kind of a, a badass move, but they did not. Uh, they did not actually die. The story, how, who knows what stories right. are true or not, okay? We're in the fog of war. My problem with this is everybody is just jumping onto a bandwagon, and if you disagree or question and say, hey, let's not race to World War III, uh, you, of course, are an enemy. Yeah, to, to this point, Glenn. We are sitting here talking about this furious Ukrainian response, which does seem to be real. And it does. something that I'm cheering on. I want Me them to, too. to Me fight too. back and fight back valiantly as they are. Um, but we are, how many stories have you heard from the media about how Russia stalled? They've tried to do this. It's been a lot harder. They're not getting to where yeah. they wanted to be. So it's been a week since this started. A week. It took us two weeks to get to Baghdad. So we are half of the time that it took us in, in what we all would look at as like the easiest, quickest war ever for us to get to Baghdad. That was, remember the whole Baghdad Bob stuff? Like we, we, anyone who said that they were defending, they were coming up with a furious defense, they were mocked because it took us two weeks. It's only been one week. And I know social media and the news cycle makes it seem like this has been going on forever, it's been one week, and I fear that we have a lot of really ugly days coming uh, here in the, in, that in the is, coming weeks and months. That is my point. Yeah. How do you know what's really going on in the ground, on the ground? Have you heard the Russian side? I believe it's most likely propaganda. Oh, but yeah. I can tell you the West is all propaganda as well right now. The, the, this is the reason you have a free flow of information so you can read differing accounts and make your own decisions. But if we really are a nation of like, wait a minute, so that was a big country going into a smaller country and that's somehow <laughs> wrong. Well, then I guess we need overlords to tell us what we can do yeah and then i'm gonna go in and i'm gonna spit that tea out at that russian that commie tea room come on america we're better than this we are better than this